Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Another FIFA 20 trading and investing video for you guys on how to make some coins with some early on investments in FIFA Ultimate Team. Now, I know I said in a previous video that I don't, I'm not a huge fan of investing early on, which I'm not. I think it's all about the trading, about the flipping, getting things into your club, flipping them for a quick profit and getting out to get those coins as high up as you can. But there is a point in this early FIFA stage where I think that if you can trade up to a certain amount of coins or if you're putting FIFA points in from the start and have coins already, there are some good investments that you can make. And it's the same every year. Uh, and this year, is it's one of those things where we're taking a look at cards that are going out of packs for ones to watch. Now, last year, everybody was onto this method and it still worked. We have to be careful, obviously. We're going to talk about some of those things. This is a very well-known method, investing in gold cards that are going to get ones to watches. Um, but I still think it's going to work this year because there are 23 cards that will be in ones to watch. Uh, and there's some of those are bound to be good investments. Obviously, it takes some risk. We don't know some of the cards that are going to be in. So we have to take that into consideration, but this should be a this should be like the number one way um, to invest uh, in early on in the game. It's not maybe not the number one way, but it is one of the most popular ways because it works and it's proven. So you guys should be able to make a lot of coins um, using this. We're going to start talking about right now. First of all, this is a list of the confirmed ones to watch cards that we have already. Jao Felix. Holler, um, Mr. Hazard, Mr. Jovich, Wambisaka, Pepe, Jolington, and the other Hazard, Thorgan Hazard, uh, from Dortmund. These are guaranteed cards that we know are going to be ones to watches already. There's probably going to be some sort of leak that comes out leading up, uh, like right before ones to watch as well. It's inevitable it happens, but we're going to have to have our investments in place beforehand even before that. So we'll talk about that risk and we'll talk about how these guys' prices are gonna be different than maybe some other possible ones to watch cards that we're gonna look at as well. So I wanna start off as always by looking back at last year at some ones to watch cards. Um, and we're gonna start with Leon Goretzka. We're gonna look at a few cards here and talk through scenarios. It's gonna be a lot of information. So if you need to pause the video, ask a question down in the comments down below um, for a special situation or something like that, go ahead and do that. I will be down there answering uh, your guys' questions as I usually am um, for that kind of stuff. So I want to talk about Goretzka first. Goretzka was a confirmed wants to watch, if I'm remembering correctly, heading into FIFA 19 wants to watch promo. So we knew that, that Goretzka was going to get one, a wants to watch card. So that means people right away thought, okay, I'm going to go invest in that card. So the graphs here start around the EA Access time period, a couple days after EA Access was out. So these card prices are rising up, as you see, as Footbin starts. But the main thing I want to point out here to you guys is the time period where uh, it is the best time to buy these investments as well. I didn't, I didn't mention that right away. The best time to buy these investments for most of these cards is Tuesday. That gives you a chance to buy in. If you buy back here on Friday, you're missing out on four days, five days of trading that you can do with that card sitting on your transfer list. You're just waiting five days for that card uh, to go up in price where you could have used those coins to trade and make coins. So I'm not going to be investing in really anything, maybe a couple discard informs, a couple gold cards right away. I'm not going to be investing heavily or even thinking about doing some investing stuff until the Monday and day after Tuesday, so like Monday night into Tuesday of the pre-orders. So that's this is people that bought the Ultimate Edition or the Champions Edition. That comes out on Monday the 20th, I don't know what day it is this year. So whatever day it is, 2019, Monday before, three days before the game comes out um, fully, before the full release of the game. I think it's the 24th this year. Was it the 24th last year as well? That's crazy. Um, I think it's the 24th this year when the full game comes out. So you see here Tuesday on the 25th. So the day after that rolls out, that's kind of like the, the best time to buy because the game is rolling out across the world and you have people opening up packs on their pre-order. They start putting in FIFA points. People that didn't play EA Access are putting in those FIFA points and they're getting onto the game. It's kind of like the game. people come onto the game in waves. You have a few people that come on during the web app period. You have a, another set of people that come on during the EA Access period, which is shortly after web app. And then you have another wave of people come on 
uh, during the pre-order access or early access. And then the biggest wave of people comes at the full game release. That's when a lot of the casuals get the game and stuff like that. So the, the buy opportunity for these ones to watch is, is during that early access, not EA access, early access, the pre-order access folks, when those people get onto the game, that is a big buy time for a lot of these gold cards because that is shortly before they go out of packs for ones to watch and they get a lot of supply from packs being opened in that time frame. And that's why you see this dip on Tuesday for Goretzka and that's kind of the buy time for a lot of these cards. But what I want to talk about here is Goretzka was known. Goretzka was a guaranteed ones to watch like we know about these cards right here. Jao Felix, Holler, Hazard, Pepe, Joelington, all of those guys. He was known about. His price, 37 k when the flipping graph starts registering it. He goes up to 43 k on Monday, drops back down to 38 k which is almost the same price as he was Friday, a couple days before. And then he goes back up to 43, 44,000 coins on Friday when the ones to watches would have come out and his gold card would have actually went out of packs. Obviously, this was heavily invested in though because it started to actually trickle downwards from there as he was in packs because people invested in this card and they knew that he was getting a once to watch. They knew that he was going to be going out of packs and the over investing was real and this card price basically stayed the same or went down. So I want to first talk to you guys about this right now. Cards that are guaranteed in this once to watch, they're probably not going to be the best investments for this time period that I'm talking about. A guy like Jao Felix, Holler, Hazard, Jovic, all these guys. The best time to sell those guys, if you want to invest in those guys, that's going to be like something that you would buy during the web app and or EA Access, and you would sell right here on this date, on the day, like the time just before everybody would be getting their pre-order access. When EA Access ends and pre-order access uh, opens up, that's when you would want to sell just before that time period. Um, kind of like selling into the hype, basically, for some of these cards that are going to go out of packs and the other sell time could be Thursday. I would say Thursday, the day before the once to watch promo is probably a, a safe time to sell into the hype as well as a lot of people are going to be investing in this stuff this year. So if you choose to invest in one of these cards, obviously we don't know how cheap they're going to be. Maybe Jao Felix comes out and he's like, his price cap is 10,000 coins and he's on the market for 8k. Um, obviously he's 80 rated. He's going to get a lot of supply, but that's kind of a situation where, well, first of all, you don't want to mess with price range updates. We learned that last year with Jao Cancelo. You don't want to mess with price range updates um, because EA takes a long time to do that, especially early on in the game. And it seems like they're just trying to not let us make coins and update price ranges. So I would stay away from something like that if that would happen. But if somebody's just way too low, let's say Pepe is like, maybe he's like 20K. I feel like that would be pretty low for that card considering the hype and the, the card that it is a very very good card um, I would consider that probably too low maybe even like 15k to get even lower than that and even crazier um, I would still if you see those prices during the web app or during EA access I would still take the money on Monday you might be able to rebuy on Tuesday with some hype and then sell again on Thursday but again for the cards that are guaranteed in so those cards that we've been looking at I would be very careful with those cards. The big money comes in cards that are technically not guaranteed, but are almost guaranteed. Last year, Fred, I don't know what's up with Flippin, by the way. I need to get some different ad blocker because it's, it's crazy, the ads that are on here and what it does to my Chrome web, brow web browser. But Fred last year during the EA access was around 18, 19,000 coins. You can see on Sunday, he hit a low of 18,000. Monday, he was 19. When the pre-order stuff came out, he actually kept going up in price, kind of leveled out on Thursday at 23, and then he exploded out of packs as he was a confirmed ones to watch all the way up to 34,000 coins. Now, I think the reason why people were kind of scared with Fred and you saw a little bit of this level off, people sold the card before once to watch came out because they weren't sure if he was going to actually get it, and he was an 82 rated card at 23,000 coins. Yes, he's hyped up, but he's 82 rated and he's 23K. That is a high price for such a low rated card on the game with that high of a pack weight. And that's another thing that scares me about a guy like Jao Felix, a guy like Joe Ellington, even a guy kind of like Juan Bisaka is they're low rated. Yes, they're gonna have some hype. Yes, people are very hyped about those cards. People love United, people love Arsenal, people love Jao Felix, he's been tearing it up. But still, the pack weight in FIFA is a big, big determinant of how high these cards rise. We're going to see that in a couple later cards. So 
a guy that I could see being comparable to um, Mr. Fred this year would be Tengai and Don Bailey. 81 rated card, so he's still low, but he's got the hype. He's French, a lot of French, really good starter teams that you can make this year. Um, and he's got the skills. He's got four-star skills, three-star weak foot, medium medium work rates, which is okay, but he's got great dribbling statistics, good stamina, good passing. Uh, his finishing is not that good at 59, but he's going to be a great box-to-box -box midfielder. And this is a card that a lot of people are hyped about because he is a cheap beast. Well, cheap. So if you see this in Don Bele card somewhere in the game, uh, early on in the EA access range, you see that pre-order time period kick off, and he's down here at like 15k. If he's like 15,000 coins, I think that's a, a steal of a buy for that card. I think he could very easily go up to 25 or 30k out of packs. But I think a lot of people are expecting him to get a once to watch. But I see, I see it's a similar, similar situation as Fred from last year. So that's one to keep an eye on. And of course, you're assuming some risk when you invest in these cards. Obviously, they're not guaranteed a once to watch. If he does not get a once to watch, you're going to see a lot of panic selling happen from that card. You're probably going to lose some coins because people are going to be investing in him with you. And they're going to be all selling once they realize that he's not getting a once to watch. Next person I want to look at is Riyad Mahrez. Another ones to watch that was known about before FIFA 19 came out. This was a guaranteed ones to watch that we knew about. And look what happens with his price. From the EA access and web app time period, he goes swooping up to 51,000 coins on the day of the pre-order release. And he never, 59,000 coins. And he never reaches that point again. He goes out of packs on Friday, 56K. The panic selling and the over-investing sell-off uh, ensues and he drops back down and this is how you're going to be able to tell if a card is super duper over invested in just because of their amount of rise mars is an 85 rated card yes it's a good stuff good card five star skills four star weak foot not a lot of right wings in the premier league just a few um a few ones up there and he was a good middle tier range card but you see him go from 30 cap 30 000 coins i remember buying mars for 30k during like earlier EA access before flipping graphs were registering. And I sold it like right at 50K because I knew that, okay, this man just went from 30,000 coins to 50K. He's an 85 rated card in the Premier League. There are plenty of other options for people to use. He's a guaranteed ones to watch. Take the money on those types of cards. If you see this type of rise, the card almost doubled in a matter of over the weekend. From Friday to Monday, he goes to 59K from 38K. Uh, and he was even lower than that before that, as I was explaining. That's a situation where you just have to realize that the card has gone up so much. If you had a couple Mares in your transfer list, if you invested early, that's where you got to sell. Or if you're in this situation here on Tuesday where you see he was 59K, today he's dropped to 53, but you're like, man, he was 38K just a couple days ago. I don't know if I can invest in that card. And I would say you're correct in not wanting to invest in a card like that. So that's something I want you guys to be very careful of with this too, is just knowing um, which of these cards have already risen so much already that they are overhyped and that they are going to be overinvested in because that's the biggest issue with this type of investing early on in FIFA. You're gonna have to combat the overinvesting because a lot of people are gonna be doing this because they know it's good and easy and it's, uh, it's a great way to invest early on in this game. So that's what I wanted to talk about with Mr. Riyad Mahrez. Now, the biggest mover, yes, this is the biggest mover in terms of percentages from gold cards that went out of packs during ones to watch. Nine Golan, he was not confirmed, and you're gonna see a trend here. The ones that are not confirmed, that aren't confirmed beforehand, so not these guys. Hazard, Jovic, none of these guys. The guys that are not confirmed are the guys that shoot up the most because people, when, when it's confirmed, we know they're getting a ones to watch, so more and more people invest in those cards and it creates over-investing. Not with these guys that are not confirmed. Obviously, it's a risk, but you can kind of take a calculated risk because you know, okay, nine Golan, he's in the Serie A for FIFA 19. He was in the Serie A. He was on Inter Milan. And you know, okay, how many good Serie A midfielders that are there, C like cams, center mids, or CDMs? You kind of look, you have Matuidi, you have a couple other guys in there, but you're like, okay, this is a very all-rounded, well-rounded card. He fits the meta of this game. He's been good in years past. People know who this guy is. He gets a once to watch card. You know he transferred. You're thinking, okay, this is a, this is a possible once to watch situation. He goes from 78,000 coins on Friday, rises up into Monday, right before the pre-order 
access people get on the game, dips down to 92k on Tuesday. And look where he goes out of packs. 145,000 coins is where this card goes to out of packs. Uh, that's just ridiculous because people were not, I don't think many people were uh, expecting nine golems to get a card. I remember talking to people last year at the beginning of the year. Uh, they bought like one nine golem, but they bought more Allisons. They bought more Edersons. They bought guys like that. Ederson obviously didn't get in. Allison did. But a guy like nine golem, people didn't invest a lot in him because he was too expensive. But that's why you see this rise stay continued, and it's a little bit later. So he went out of packs here on, on Friday, and he stayed high. You know, he stayed at 140,000 coins because this was a card that a lot of people wanted to use in their teams, the gold card. And people realized that with this card being out of packs, he lost. You have to think about it this way too. Some of these ones to watch cards stay higher because yes, the market gains more coins and people are playing week in league and getting rewards. But also that card lost a week of time in packs where a lot of other cards were in packs. And if it's a very good card, people are willing to pay that extra price for it. That's why you see this nine golden card go from 78,000 coins, even lower than that in the early EA access stages, up to 144,000 coins. So how can you find cards like that this year? Part of the key to why nine golden went up so much was because he was an 85 rated. He has low pack weight compared to some of those 81s and 82s. And he's very popular, good linking, and he's very meta. Um, so we're gonna start looking at some FIFA 20 players um, where we can talk about some of this stuff um, and look at some guys this year that I'm interested in and talk about some of the guys that are included and wants to watch. Wambi Saka, again, I want to I want to revisit this. Wambi Saka, 79 rated. A lot of people are probably going to want to invest in this card. Four-star skills? Like, what? English right back Manchester United. Well, we know what happened last year with a Manchester United player. So I would expect Wambi Saka to be somebody that a lot of people invest in this year. I would think that his graph would be close to Goretzka, um, but he's guaranteed. So I think also that he's going to be similar to uh, to our friend Mares right here. Mares went down a lot. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to buy a lot of Wambi Saka, expecting him to continue to go up in price. I would take the safe way out with this guy. All right, I would take the safe way out with Wambi Saka. If you're investing in him during the EA access stages, I would sell before we get the supply of this card on the market on this Monday or three days before the early access, pre-order access. I would sell the day before then, leading up to that period, just to get him out and take your safe coins, whatever he has risen to then. Then just kind of watch his price. If he dips down a ton on Tuesday, maybe people realize that he was overpriced and a lot of supply came onto the market. I, that would almost make me scared too, realizing how much supply came onto the market then. But you can just kind of monitor his price. Maybe you can pick up a couple on Tuesday and sell them on Thursday before he would go out of packs for once to watch. But since he is a guaranteed card, I am a bit skeptical about Wami Saka. I like Endon Bailey a lot more, but it really depends on how much his price rises from this point of when the graph comes into play here. We're looking at Fred again as our example. This is Fred uh, from FIFA 19. It all depends on how cheap Endon Bailey is during EA access and how much he climbs up to the top here. Uh, before that first day. So like Monday or Tuesday, when we're looking to buy these cards, when the pre-order access is out and people are opening packs, pushing supply onto the market, if his price is like 19K and then by Monday it's 30K, steer clear, stay away. An 81 rated card at 30,000 coins, yes, he's meta, yes, he's Premier League, but don't even touch that, please. Don't even touch that, all right? Yes, he might go up a little bit more, but not much because that's way, way inflated sell into the hype on a situation like that. But if you see him down here at like 10 to 15K during EA access and web app access, maybe he goes up to almost 20K on this Monday time period right here. But then on Tuesday, he drops back down to like 15. He drops down a couple thousand coins. Then you take some action. You buy a couple of them, put them on your transfer list, and he might just be 30,000 coins or 25K maybe when he goes out of packs or even on Thursday before he would go out of packs, if you feel like there's a lot of people investing in that card, which I think there would be, um, taking the safe money ahead of time uh, and, and just getting it out. That's one thing that I want to mention right now too with, with the mindset of early on FIFA. You don't want to get super duper risky early on in FIFA with an investment like this 
because you don't have coins to fall back on. If you dump, let's say you have 200,000 coins and you dump 100K into Endon Bailey. So let's say you buy five. You buy, that's probably not 100K, but you put half your coins in Endon Bailey, you have five of them. Maybe you have like 150,000 coins and you put whatever 75K into Endon Bailey. And Endon Bailey goes from that price range of like 15 to 17K and he drops down to 10K and you're losing 5,000 coins a card. That's a big L to take in early on FIFA. So early on in FIFA, when you're in the profit and you're in the good money, and if Endon Bailey goes from 15K to 27K, get him out. Seriously, take the money. That's doubling the money on your card. Even if he goes from 15 to 23K, that's solid money get out take the money and continue to use those coins to trade and to flip those cards and continually to make coins because it's not the best idea to be super duper risky early on in the game yes you want to make coins and you have to take risks to make coins but taking a huge risk like that is just not a smart move early on in the game with a card like this because of the pack weight that's the thing that i'm scared about here these lower rated guys are so hit or miss because of the pack weight you really have to depend on a lot of hype now, moving into a more high-rated player. I think this guy is flying under the radar big time this year. I know he did not transfer to a major club. Real Batiste is not a major, major club, but he came from Lyon. He's French, and he's in La Liga. If this man gets a once-to-watch card, I see him being so similar to Nine Golan, going from a, a pretty pretty respectable price. Nine Golan would be probably more inflated than his Fakir card would be. You know, this Fakir card, he's French and he is in La Liga. Think about how many other French La Liga cards that you could link him with that you that could make some sick hybrids. You got Ousmane Dembele, right wing from Barcelona. You have Griezmann. You have Ferran Langlet. So many French guys in La Liga that need a center mid counterpart to link him to. This is the guy to do it with. This is, this is basically, if you're doing like a, a hybrid squad, this is a guy for La Liga that you're going to get a lot of links from this year and if he gets a once to watch card if if you see this card at like 10,000 coins during EA access periods or uh, again during that time frame when all the packs are opened after um, when the pre-order people come onto the game that wave essentially that that's a screaming buy to me 10,000 coins for an 84 rated Fakir card now in La Liga um, obviously he's not guaranteed a once to watch but I think once the watch could be very La Liga heavy this year, you have a couple guys from uh, Real Madrid already confirmed. I think you're going to have two guys in Griezmann and De Jong from uh, Barcelona confirmed. And I think Fakir could be another person that gets into here. Uh, and of course with um, Jao Felix as well. I think we could have six guys from La Liga. Now that's almost too much in my mind, but La Liga could have a huge presence in once to watch this year if Fakir gets in. I think he could be a massive, massive investment. If you don't think he's going to get in, maybe you sell him the hype anyway. He's going to be a very usable card. If he is like 10,000 coins, it all depends on his price early on in FIFA. We'll be monitoring that and talking about all these cards that are possible ones to watches um, as we get closer to that date. But just monitor his price, and if he is at a point where it looks investable, we'll definitely talk about it and make some moves. Last one I want to talk about um, is Schultz. Dortmund already has one guaranteed ones to watch player in Thorgan Hazard, 82 rated right wing card from the Bundesliga. Brandt is also another possible ones to watch, but you know, I think the Schultz card could pull it off. And the thing that could be big about Schultz is the fact that he is a left back in the Bundesliga. He his main competition, he is the he's top tier left back in the Bundesliga. You have David Alaba, who is gonna be overpriced and his stats aren't very good uh, for the price that you're gonna pay for this card. This Schultz card probably is gonna be somewhere around like the 10 to 15k range, if I had to guess. Rusillian would be in there as well, maybe a smidge higher. But the Schultz card plays great in the demo when I have used him. He's gonna be German, great links. Um, to a guy like Goretzka, to a guy like Havertz, who's very popular. Brandt has a good card. And he's going to be great for Bundesliga squ uh, squads, Bundesliga triangles on the left side. Uh, so I see this guy as maybe a sleeper pick. Maybe he's less than 10,000 coins, and then you can pounce on that card and then sell him and uh, and make some money on that because that's the huge thing with these ones to watch cards, cards um, that are low rated. Yes, they have the hype. He's going to have the hype as a left back,
but it all depends on if he gets that once the last card. And that's the gambling and the guessing game with all of this. So again, I want to go over some of the time periods again, looking at some of these older graphs. Again, we're going to look at Fred for this one. Obviously, you see that the prices are going to rise. Uh, let's go with this one right here. Prices are going to rise up into Monday or the day before the pre-order release. Like at, right here, pre-order FIFA 20. The day before the pre-order release, you're going to see the prices rising up into that point. Then they're probably going to take a dip on the next day because a lot of people are coming out of the game and opening packs. That's the pre-order release. Again, that's the ultimate, that's the optimal time to invest in some of these cards because in my opinion, you shouldn't be doing much investing before that. Maybe buy a card or two, throw it on your transfer list because you got a stupid deal on it in one of the first two days of, of, um, of early access or web app. But other than that, I think the most economical time to invest is even after they've risen up a little bit. To be honest, some of these cards will be higher than what they were during EA Access earlier on, but you're knowing and you're realizing that more people are coming onto the game, there's more demand for that card, there's more hype for that card, and that card could rise up in price. And that Tuesday is a first batch of supply. You can buy on Tuesday, you can sell on Thursday. It's a great quick turnaround with some of those cards that are gonna be super hyped up. You can buy Tuesday, Monday night, and then or buy Monday night or Tuesday and then sell on Thursday into the hype or continue. You can hold your balls, as some people say in the trading community. You can hold your balls and hold your cards and hope that he rises as he goes out of packs. Now, that would be a better situation for some of the higher cards, like we saw with Nine Golan as an 85 rated. He has less supply, but he's also going to have more demand as we go another week in FIFA Ultimate Team as people continue to get coins from trading, from playing games, and from rewards. So, Again, you're looking at buy times during the pre-order period and you're looking at sell times right before ones to watch or holding your balls and, and selling uh, a couple days after ones to watch, probably on that Sunday as people are you know, building their teams or continuing to play and getting stuff like that. Now, obviously, this is a very big method of investing. This is a very long video. I wanted to make it long and I wanted to make it very specific for you guys because this is a method of investing that a lot of people are going to be into. Uh, and I wanted to prepare you guys for it. Um, I'm going to be investing in some of these cards. I wanted to show you the risk. I wanted to show you the possible reward. And I wanted to show you and just talk about everything that could come along with some of these early investments in FIFA 20 Ultimate Team. We'll have another video talking about this a little bit later. Ones to watch investing um, as we get closer to that date. And probably after the EA Access is out, we'll be looking at some prices and seeing what um, what cards are going to be good to invest in. One last thing I'm going to mention to you guys. Just do some Google searching. Look at This is TransferMarket.us. TransferMarket.us, and it has a listing of all of the biggest transfers that happened over the summer. Obviously, there's plenty of guys that could get into ones to watch that I didn't mention before. Um, Lucas Hernandez, center back to Bayern. Philip Coutinho to Bayern. De Ligt to Juve. Um, Icardi to uh, PSG. Romelu Lukaku to Inter. Um, you know, stuff like that. Educate yourself with some of the possibilities of cards that could just even make it into ones to watch. There's a plethora of them this year. There's a huge field, a lot of hype players, and a lot of cool cards that we could see get ones to watches this year. Of course, you guys might have questions. Drop them down below. I will be down there answering them, and we'll be talking about this in future videos and on my streams. Check out my other links in the description as well. If you enjoyed the video, smash a thumbs up on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.